Hello everyone, my name is Jordi and I'm the developer of We Who Are About To Die and I wanted to make this tutorial video for the people who might still be struggling with the combat in this game. Uh, I'm gonna walk through the tutorial and just explain the current combat system as of version 0.1. So it's the current live version. And I'm sure it's gonna be very helpful for also the people that are a little bit more comfortable with the combat. So I'm gonna explain a little more, you know, advanced things here and there. I'll walk through the tutorial and then also do the debut fight. So let's just get into it. Number one is the camera. So you can do a lot of uh, different things to sort of adjust the camera to your liking. Um, the first thing you can toggle on and off is uh, auto cam. So I added auto cam to basically help you turn the camera behind you as you're fighting. So when you have it on, which you can see in the, the corner here, uh, as soon as I rotate my character, my camera will slowly kind of trail behind. Uh, so that could potentially help you uh, sort of manage the camera a bit. If that's not your thing, you can just turn it off. Uh, you can manually adjust the camera behind you with R. And then the middle mouse button will basically pan. And of course, you can also scroll in and out. Um, so that's the basic gist. But then the best thing to do really at first when you're learning the game is to use targeting which we'll get to in a second here all right then we have movement aim and orientation so you face the cursor as you can see this is a very essential part of the game and you definitely can use this uh, to your advantage during combat when you're holding shift you go into sprint mode uh, in that mode you don't face the cursor and you just kind of can run around like this with wasd as your main movement controls uh, the big thing as well here is if you just hold shift, you also stop turning to your cursor. So it, it works as well when you're not moving, right? And you could potentially use that as well. There's a lot of stuff here that you can use in your own way. Uh, and then this part is very important for advanced players. I think a lot of people are missing this. It's too much to take in at, at the very beginning. But when your cursor is farther away from you, you aim up. And when your cursor is near you, you aim down. So in a lot of cases in the game, you're going to want to hit people in the legs and stuff like that or try to hit them right in the head or something like this. And then that becomes incredibly important. So if I put my cursor right here and I do a little attack, which we'll explain in more detail in a second, uh, you'll see that I'm swiping down and I can really hit someone right in the legs that way. Or I can aim a little bit up. For the most part, you want to keep your cursor like around this distance and then you'll basically strike forward. Um, so that's the most default way to place your cursor. Let's get into actual combat. So I'll, I'll hide this little thing here so it's a little bit less uh, information dense. But the basic idea of the game is that you click and drag in a certain direction relative to your character. And you can see this little UI on the ground, which helps you show kind of what's happening. And it, the character will do one of, uh, in this case, six directional attacks. So you can see. There's a left and a right. There's a sort of a, a back uh, left and right and a front uh, left and right, which swipes diagonally up and down respectively. On top of that, you can also stab by just holding click or you can uh, force that stab by holding alt if that's uh, difficult for you. So just literally click and don't move the cursor. Uh, and after one second, each attack that you have ready will just lock in so you can then do whatever you want with it. Uh, as you can see, I can just hold this stab and then release when I want. Same with any directional hits. I can just click and drag, hold it, and then release when I want. The last attack that you have is an overhead slash. So that's a double click uh, or a control to guarantee it. So you just double click and don't move the cursor. And then again, you can hold it for as long as you want. Uh, in fact, to uh, emphasize that a bit more is holding your attack is actually going to do a little bit more damage. So if you just click, double click, for example, or you just click or you just do little drags like this and you let go immediately, you're going to do a lot less damage because you're not kind of powering up your attack. That's something I think a lot of people are missing. So if you feel like you're not doing enough damage, that that's might be one of the reasons. Um, and that's the basic idea, really. There's a to training UI, as I showed here. So this little 3D arrow widget right here is basically to learn the game and then on the floor as well you can see kind of what's happening but you can toggle that off and on with t uh, so this is sort of the default way to play the game eventually 
Let's see, am I missing anything? I think that's it. So attack animations do vary per weapon class. Swords are very basic. They have eight different types of attacks, but different weapons will have very different animations and we'll show that when we get over here. All right. There we go. Um, the next section is blocking. So you can click on items to pick them up when they're near you, uh, assuming that you have a free hand for that item. Uh, also something that people are missing is that you can hover over stuff in the arena and see the stats. Um, so blocking with a shield is very simple. You pick up the shield and then you just hold right mouse button. Uh, in general, right mouse button is the block uh, button and then left is for attacks. Uh, the mouse in general is for your upper body and the keyboard is for your lower body. And you can control and combine all these things together to do whatever you want. So. You just block by holding right mouse button, but during a block also you can see that the shield will kind of move towards your cursor a little bit faster than you do. And that's the same for when you're uh, targeting. So that way you can aim the shield to actually have more chance to block. And the game is physics based, so you probably know that by now. That means that the shield is just an active physical entity, so you don't actually have to block to do a block. Um, right now it's still going to block attacks that are coming in from the left. And a little tip, for example, is that if you hold a stab, a lot of the animations are very, very logical, so the shield is already raised up uh, in this case. So this is just as effective as blocking. I'm just holding the left mouse button right now. So you could, for example, just kind of wait around, wait for the AI to open up, and then boom, you know, uh, something like that. Same for overheads. When you do an overhead, it'll move the shield along with your strike to protect your arm, because that can get damaged. It's all very location-based. Uh, you can shield bash or kick with F. Uh, shield bashes and kicks are basically utility. Uh, they require a lot of stamina, but they can knock back enemies if you're getting crowded a bit, but they don't do damage at the moment. Uh, that might change. A lot of things, everything I'm talking about here might change, and if there's enough changes, I might update this tutorial as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, the game is very much under construction. So let's show, me, let's show the kick as well. You have a nice little kick like this. In general, shield bash should be better, uh, but right now, I think the shield bash could be improved. Or maybe kicks could be nerfed, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Uh, shields will absolutely break, so if you use them too much, you know they're not the, the, the perfect uh, tool here. They're very, very, very useful, obviously, to keep you alive, but they eventually will break, and shield bashes do damage to your shield as well. Onto targeting, so when you hit tab, you target the nearest thing. If you hit tab again, you'll target the second nearest thing, and then cycle between them. You can also press V to cycle between every single thing in the arena if for some reason you want to target something really far away. For example, to throw at it. You press X to untarget uh, whatever it is that you're facing. And during targeting, essentially your character locks in front of them. Uh, there's a few systems that change, right? So the camera is uh, basically sorted for you. So this is essential for learning the game, I think. Make sure you use targeting. You hit that tab button uh, frequently. And, you know, you can still pan a little bit and everything. You can override it to look around, but it will just come back to the, the target that you have. And your torso is still under control. So you can see I'm not moving my entire body anymore, but I am moving my torso. And this is important as well. So if I hold my cursor here and I do an attack like this, you can see that it kind of like doesn't, it doesn't swing properly. It doesn't really have the force that it could have because my cursor remains over here and my torso is literally facing that way. So one thing that you can do, and we'll get to that in the next sections as well, is you can strike and then at least hold your cursor over your target. That's the general advice that I would have for you uh, so that you have a nice, clean, basic strike. Or you can even curve along with your strike after you release it like this. So you can do something like that and that will have way more momentum. And as such, since it's physics based, it will have more damage. Uh, you very much control the damage here in this game, uh, although, you know, having a really good weapon is step one. All right, let me see. Am I missing anything here? Uh, yep, yeah, no, just keep your cursor near the enemy. You can press C to taunt. Uh, this is a lot of flavor, of course, but it also has gameplay implications. The crowd might throw in a weapon if they like you enough when you taunt, unless you do it too much. Uh, health and stamina. Obviously, stamina is a big thing in this game. Uh, I will continue to refine the balance on it. I've already mentioned this a bit. Uh, I know it's not uh, completely perfect right now. There's very little stamina to go by in level one. That is partially intentional though. I want people to learn how to fight and make every single strike count. And when you do, I think stamina 
uh, becomes not not such an issue anymore. So spamming attacks and stuff like that will never work out uh, in this game. Um, so yeah, and when you take damage, your stamina goes down. So being hit at all is really impactful and you really want to avoid it as much as possible. Um, yes, stamina is depleted with every single action, basically, right? So literally everything you do in combat will take away some stamina. Everything that makes sense that would tire you out uh, will sort of affect your stamina. Uh, and then lastly here, little emphasis as well, is that the skills in the game are very impactful. So at the start, when you play for the very first time, you don't know how to fight. So your player skill is nothing, basically, right? You're learning. But your character skill at level one, your character itself also doesn't know how to fight. So in the very beginning, it's two layers of complexity. And as you level up, let's say you're level 10 or, or level uh, 5 even, your character will become a little bit more fluid and respond to your inputs a bit more. So keep that in mind. And the only thing you have to do is just fight. And you're, you'll, your character is going to get better at the thing that you're doing. So if you do a lot of cardio, if you're running around a lot, you're jumping around a lot, your stamina will improve. And if you use two-handed swords, for example, your two-handed sword skill will improve. So everything makes... Uh, sense in that regard uh, and you should also do training I'll, I'll talk more about the career menu and all that stuff because there's a whole lot of things to talk about I might do a tutorial if there's demand you know let me know in the comments if that's something that sounds interesting um, but it really does impact the combat directly all right let's get into defending you can press Q to drop your weapon um, and the new defense system here directional defense is that you just hold right mouse button over your enemy uh, whether you're targeting or not it will just kind of figure out who you're targeting here and the direction of the block will automatically adjust to the attack that they're doing right if you as long as you're blocking now one thing you'll notice is that my cursor is yellow but as i near uh, the enemy's weapon it will become more and more blue and that means that the block basically becomes more reliable right it's still not gonna be perfect blocking without a shield is dangerous and the big thing that you should do is keep your distance Right? That's, it's all about where you are, just like in real combat. Um, so blocking is like a ra last resort and won't always work, for sure. Um, there's also, see that was uh, like a little bit too high. Right. There we go. And so on. Right. But when you're getting attacked, ideally you just want to be out of the way, to be honest. Right. Uh, and then there's some issues with the hitboxes, of course, not always a block will register and that's something that I'll refine over time as well. Uh, Physics-based stuff is quite difficult to iron out all the little things. Okay, what else here? Uh, yeah, so I already mentioned this and you can drop your shield as well. Then we have advanced attacking, so like I said, you can swing into things. Now one thing I want to mention here is for the advanced players is stop targeting. At some point, targeting will sort of hold you back, right? So because now you can only put your torso into it. But if you don't target, you can put your entire body into a swing. And that will absolutely impact just how much damage you're doing, especially when you're fighting multiple targets, right? You want to stay flexible. And it's a lot to do at first, but uh, that's something to work towards is stop targeting. Uh, the targeting are basically training wheels. Um, so there's that, and then you can do quick flicks like I mentioned. You can absolutely just quickly damage an enemy, maybe to interrupt them or something. Um, but ideally you want to hold it a little bit, lock in that attack around a second or so, and then you'll do way more damage. The last concept here is that basically any of the things that you can do in this game can be interrupted by another thing. So everything is live. So if I attack and then I hit right mouse button immediately, I'll just cancel the attack. That way you can start fainting. Right, so you can trick the enemy into blocking in a certain direction and then go the other way and just hit them, right? Uh, so this is a, a, quite an essential thing to confuse your opponents. Right, as soon as you have a character that has a bit more stamina, stuff like that opens up. Uh, all right. Dashing, you can double tap to dash in any direction. If the double tap annoys you, you can turn it off in the game options. Uh, you can also just hold space and you'll jump in a direction that you're moving. Uh, this is nice to just sort of jump out of the way, but you can also use this in combat. You can use the momentum of a dash into a swing and do way more damage that way, which is also a nice advanced technique. Uh, in fact, with shift, I, I wanted to show this real quick as well, like just to show you what's possible here. And I hope I'll be able to do this, but you can basically do like pirouettes and stuff like that and do full 360 attacks. So if I 
trying to try to get this is difficult. <laughs> Hold on. I think the turning circle is maybe a little bit. So yeah, that was a little bit what I'm trying to say. Like with, with shift and sprinting, which you can do, by the way, you can just like hold your attack and then sprint into someone. And again, that'll do a little bit more damage. Uh, you should be able to eventually master some really weird uh, high velocity attacks. Uh, that wasn't a great demonstration. You know, I'm not the best at my own game, actually. But um, just so you know, you can experiment a bit and sort of invent your own stuff here. All right, let's talk about weapons. Uh, first off, E and Q, left and right hand drops those weapons or offhand uh, items and if, at the moment it's just shields uh, but that might change eventually um, so you have swords of course the basic item i would say something to start with but there's also spears and i think spear and shield is a very simple way to get started like if, if the combat system is too much for you a spear is very simple and very effective at the start of the game so you could literally just stab and that's it you can also do like a little wider stab if you drag to the right and you can do an overhead if you double click and that's it there's three attacks for spears so very simple uh, the big thing with spears is that you want to aim up down left right and really try to specifically hit the exposed or even weak part of an enemy okay then we have pole arms well actually let's talk about two-handed first uh, these are two-handed swords are very similar to one-handed they have all the same attack directions they're of course a little bit more nimble you're going to be able to move fast and hit hard but you're a little more exposed right that's the basic idea here um, and there's axes maces and shields uh, sorry axes maces and swords for both two-handers and uh, one-handed weapons so there's a lot of variation there as well they do different things they have different weapon um, uh, type or damage types so blunt for example will do more against armor and so on so there's that whole element but i'm not going to get into that yet uh, right now then there's pole arms and i think a lot of people don't really understand pole arms yet i'm going to refine it for sure but the basic idea of a pole arm is that it's a utility item uh, it could be anything from a from a really heavy hammer to a glaive uh, but the idea is that the left sorry the right side attacks are normal right they're just like the same that you would expect but the uh, left hand attacks are basically back attacks so these are knockback attacks and they will push back enemies uh, they will sort of help you with crowd control and stuff like that uh, so they do some extra knockback and things like this um, most pole arms will have like a lot more special stuff in their in their uh, or traits in their actual item stats so they're more utility based like i said they, they might do a tremendous amount of damage against shields for example so you just bash right through the shield because all you can do is do right-handed attacks anyway right into a shield uh, and so on and so forth so pole arms are i would say the more the most like specific advanced weapon type in the game uh, at the moment uh, if you're learning go with a spear or a one-hander and that's probably the safest bet the last thing here is that there are destructibles in the arenas all over the place. You'll learn quickly which things break. They will essentially break on pretty much one hit. Uh, oops. So there could be jugs, there could be planks and, and pieces of wood and stuff like that. Kind of like a wrestling match, right? And they actually tend to do a lot of damage. So if you get a little hit in, the audience is going to love it and you're going to do quite a bit of damage. But you, they're one use, so make sure it counts, I guess. Uh, all right. And there, yeah, it sticks like this as well. In that case, that was a two-hander. And then there's the last thing here. Let me see. Did I miss anything? No. Nope. Uh, last thing is throwing. And throwing is a big topic. A lot of people are struggling with it. They either hate it or they love it. But I think no one has really figured out throwing yet. And that makes sense. It's a very difficult, uh, high advanced, you know, or high level uh, combat mechanic right now. I am going to refine it over time, of course. But I'll show you the basic idea here. Um, essentially, when you're letting go of your weapon with E, you're just dropping a weapon, the momentum of the weapon persists. And that's the, that's the, the basic idea here. It's a physics-based system. So if I, for example, you know, turn around while dropping, it's just gonna keep going and that's it. And that's actually a throw in itself, right? So whatever I do with my body, oh, let me wait for that, yeah. So whatever I do with my body in movement, uh, with my arm or my entire torso, it's just gonna, Kind of persist as I let go of the weapon. That's all you're doing. You're just letting go of it, right? Um, and so that can be turned into a throw. You can do something like this, where you 
do a directional attack, right? And that is quite difficult you know, in real life too. If you want to throw that way, it's really hard. I recommend doing an overhead. So you double click, you hold it. Then you can aim up or down or left or right and sort of specify where you want to throw. And then you do the attack. I'm not going to do it yet. You do the attack and right at the end of the attack, you let go, right? Not too soon. If you do too soon, you'll, let me try to mess up here. You'll just do kind of like this. And you might even hit yourself <laughs> with that or you might throw backwards or whatever. But if you do it at the end, you should be able to throw down range at least. And you might actually inflict some damage. It's not easy, right? As you can see, I'm not going to hit every single throw here. Let me actually target this, which will help a little bit. But as long as you're putting it down range, you might actually do some damage, which is basically free damage, right? I'm hitting a little bit low now. So let me see if I can aim up a bit. I notice it's not okay hold on right like this the distance that you're standing just like real axe throwing by the way is also super important like hitting it with the, the actual um, sharp end is important if you don't it's barely gonna do any damage I'm kind of letting go I'm kind of messing up a little bit here I should be able to yeah that's a little bit better I guess I'm a bit camera shy here let me try that again There we go, that's a little bit better. That was better, okay. I'm starting to warm up a bit. This is the first time I'm playing in actually quite a few days now with all the craziness of launch. So uh, one thing I did notice is that there is a bug uh, that can pop up where you stop aiming up or down for some reason and it aims all the way up or whatever. So that might affect your throws a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That's better. So usually, I, you know, this isn't the best demonstration. Usually I can hit the target like every single time. Uh, that's better. Okay, I'm getting a little bit more warmed up. Uh, I promise you there's a skill involved here. There's a little bit of randomness, of course, throughout the entire game. You're going to mess up a good chunk of throws. But as long as you can put it down range, you're going to do something with it. And there's a lot of stuff in the arena usually. So you want to take your main weapon. You just leave it on the floor, right? Let's say this is my main weapon here and there's a nice javelin right there. It's, javelins are one use for the most part. I'll just do something like this, pick it up, double click and throw it down and then pick up my own weapon again, right? Because I want to keep my own main weapon. Uh, so for throwing, uh, another thing is you want to aim with the cursor near your actual target or use targeting. It will assist you, right? The, there's a throwing skill in the game and um, at zero throwing skill, you will basically not get any assist whatsoever. So it's pure physics, right? Uh, but when you have more and more throwing skill, it will sort of like give you more force and aim a little bit more towards your cursor automatically, right? No matter what you do. Um, so that's kind of the idea behind the game. And something that's important to note is that throwing skill will improve even if you mess up a throw. As long as you're trying to throw, you'll gain throwing skill and quite quickly. So it's important to just chuck stuff all the time if that's something that you're interested in doing um or getting better at uh, as a character right there we go all right and then yeah spears as i already showed when you have a shield you double click you do this kind of overhead uh, animation javelin throw anything else won't really work very well but with that you should be able to put stuff on or near a target uh, quite reliably as you practice more and more all right then you can fight these sparring guys, but let's just go into the de debut fight and show all this stuff in action, right? All right. Okay, here we go. This is our first fight. Uh, this guy is just a shield user. He should have a wooden sword. We have a, a nice, really decent metal sword, so we're going to do way more damage than him. This should be very doable, right? So first thing I want to do is I'm just going to target. I'm not going to try to play at an advanced level here because it's just a demo uh, so keep targeting the enemy you can see there's a lot of stuff here we could throw at him uh, i might actually try that axes are good to throw especially against shields they do a lot of damage so let's see Oof! you can grab that back right out of him or out of his shield and let's throw this attack him with this pot here I'll grab my sword back there we go so he's gonna every now and then he's gonna open up like right now you see the the right side was a little bit open for the most part the left side or his right side will be very covered so the left side is vulnerable so i want to do attacks from the left for the most part 
I could swing at his legs. Right? Or I could do overheads to hit him right in the head and just outright murder him. Right? Um, that was a 30 damage attack, so with just a pretty basic sword. Uh, hopefully that shows you that you can absolutely influence just how much damage you do if you're finding that it's difficult to kill people. Uh, you need to hit them in the weak spots and you need to hit them hard. So we're going to have a little group battle here. This guy seems like a good challenge. So his torso is the weakest armor, so I'm going to try to stab him right in the middle if I can. Let's take care of this other guy first. He's a little more doable, I think. Um, I detargeted that because I'm fighting two at the same time. It's going to be a lot easier without targeting. And I'm going to back up, make sure I keep my distance. A very important concept that I haven't touched on is the fact that when you're attacking, there are very... Uh, low impact parts of your weapon so if i if i'm too close and i do this i'll barely do damage because i'm hitting him basically with the bottom of, a, of my sword or even with the pummel and so standing too close is one of the biggest mistakes i've seen so far in streams and videos and stuff like that uh, you want to hit them with the very end of your weapon that's the highest velocity part right uh, and you'll probably have figured that out if you've ever played with a flail uh, so i want to hit this guy right at the right distance so i can maximize damage and also stay far uh, away from him right? this guy has a spear so i'm gonna make sure i keep to the right he might have a little more difficult a difficult time to hit me if i do that if i just kind of move around him uh, and also with a spear guy if you're facing them you want to just like press them right you want to make sure that you close the distance as much as possible oh the other guy's still alive let me take care of him. His armor just went. As I said, the armor is weak compared to all the other stuff he has. So I'm going to try to stab him right in the middle here. Let me see. Not quite. Oh, there we go. Okay. That's a better sword. Learning the swords is also, or the weapons, is also a big thing. You want to be able to know what to pick up, uh, which things are better than other things. If you're struggling you know uh, make sure that you're focusing on having a good weapon right? that's very very important uh, early on especially this is a destructible flank here I'm just gonna chuck some stuff down range oh he's dead that was quite a short fight um, you can see that you can be very lethal once you know kind of what you're doing um, and yeah, hopefully this tutorial was very helpful. I might update this again later as the game develops, of course. Put down in the comments what you think, uh, maybe what you think of the game, what you think of the combat system. If there's any more things that are unclear, if you have questions. And especially if you want a career menu tutorial as well, let me know. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.